Hello everyone, and welcome to an extremely rare and unusual Friday live stream. If you watched part four, you know that I just didn't feel that I would do the entire process justice if I tried to rush this last part in the half hour I had left to do yesterday. Um, so I did go ahead and schedule our uh, a fifth one. If you've been following along, we've been working on this project all week. Um, I do have another one that I ever had already made. It was all cotton fabric, 100% cotton, whereas this has an exterior, this, this heart fabric is a uh, waterproof cans canvas. So just a little different on the bag. Um, we've got the inside all done. We've got our zippered pocket across the top. You can't really see in the dark, but hey. Um, we've got everything all done. The only thing we have left to do is to attach the top webbing, which is this, and I am putting in the optional zipper. So that's that. And the way this pattern came from, I always pick the thimble. Um, sorry, there's a car outside the door. Yep, that's gone now. Thank you. It's just driving me crazy. I hate it when cars just pull up and stop and you know you're not getting anything. So I'm not certain what they were here for. But anyway, um, this bag pattern came. It's a free pattern. If you look up on Pinterest, 10 pocket travel tote, you're going to find this pattern. Um, it's from I Always Pick the Thimble. And I believe it actually, the link goes to IAlwaysPickTheThimble.com um, and then 10 pop, pocket travel tote. I made one, like I said, out of all cotton and I ma made the second one. I only made one adjust, well, two adjustments to the pattern. Um, the first one was an easy one. I put feet on the bottom of the bag, which you can't really see from here, but we put them on during part four. Um, the other thing I changed was on the pattern, they did putting all the bag together and then boxed out the corners with the lining inside. And I did a box corner on the lining and a box corner on the exterior before I put the lining in. So those are the two changes I made. Uh, other than that, I've done everything following along the pattern. Uh, in my first bag, I actually put two of these exterior pockets on. I put one on, e on either side. With this one, I only put it on the one side. Um, all right, now, this is the part that I think is cool. So normally when you have a bag, you end up leaving a slot open somewhere in the lining so that you can turn everything right side out after you get the zipper on. And depending upon the type of interfacing you're using, that can be a challenge. Uh, I use some very heavy interfacing, uh, the decor bond, so the big, the really heavy, thick crafting bond um, in my pocket so that mine stands up nicely. I've got a nice, uh, I've got a much stiffer bag. I mean, it's still soft because it's got the batting in it, so it, it's not like it's stiff and unmoving uh, or uncomfortable, but it does have a lot of st stiffness to it. it. It does stand up quite nicely. Um, but, um, so that can be a challenge. The other thing is if you put a zipper on, you put the lining in and then you put the, z or, or you put the zipper on the exterior then you put the lining in, and then you have to do the top stitch around the zipper, which is always a pain in the neck because of where the zipper pull ends up. Um, I very rarely do that. I used, uh, Usually they're, they're much smaller, tinier bags, so they're a very small, maybe seven inch zipper or something. A full zipper like this, I would never do that way. So this designer developed a process where you use webbing to hide the seam, which is cool. So the first thing we need to do is we need to put our webbing onto the top of the bag. 
we have one long piece of webbing and we're going to put it around the entire top of the bag and it's going to have some little pieces sticking off to the side here and we're going to end up cutting them down, trimming them, folding them over and then zigzagging them down. It's a pretty cool process but we're not going to do that right away. First we need to get this attached and it gets attached to the top or a quarter inch down. So this is the quarter inch down. And I need my pins. And let's see, can we get you up high enough so I can, uh, let's see, get you around the side. Go from here. Does that work? It's a little tight, but we might be able to make it work. Okay, that way you can see what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. So here's the top of our bag. And when we, sew, we put the handles on, they're a quarter of an inch up. So all the way around, we've got an extra quarter inch of this. That way when we sew after we get the webbing on, it's going to go up in the air and we can stitch and we'll get some extra strength so that our handles don't come loose at any point in time. Because that's an important piece to, of this puzzle, making sure that our um, handles don't come loose. Oops, come on. There, that might be a better angle. All right. So now we want to determine which side is the front and which side is the back of our bag. I am going to count this as the front of my bag, not the side with the pockets. There, let me, I gotta explain this a little bit better. All right. So when I carry this bag, if I were to carry it, I want to carry it this way. I want the no pockets on the exterior. I want the pockets on the interior against my body. That way, if anyone were to try and pickpocket me, there's, there's nothing on the exterior here to, to get into. They'd have to get into my pockets right here. And then we are going to have a zipper across the top. So we're not going to be able to get in that way. So you're looking at this bag as this is the back, or this is the front, and this is the back. Next thing, how do you carry your bag? I carry my bag on my left hand shoulder. So therefore, this is the front, this is the part facing out, and this is the part where faces the back. Therefore, I prefer to put the unsightly portion of this strip at the front. Most people do not walk up to you and see your bag. They're either coming from the side or they're coming from the back. So if someone is admiring your bag, which you've put a lot of work into this, you appreciate it when someone admires it, you want them to see the better looking side, if that makes sense. So this is where my tabs are going to end up. And I guess now we need to go back to that view. There we go. Okay. It keeps tipping. It doesn't want to stay where I want it to stay. Okay, it says on the pattern, um, begin pinning, belting facing E. No, wait a minute, 27, yeah. 
leaving one inch or more overhang at both ends. Place top edge of belting facing one quarter inch below the top raw edge of the tote. So we're not going with the where the webbing is a quarter inch. We're going another quarter inch down, which happens to be approximately where my basting stitch is. So we'll be able to follow along there pretty well. First thing I want is they want me to leave an inch hanging off the side. So my inch is going to be right there. So my first pin my first pin, first of all, it's too high up, so I messed that up already. There we go. So my first pin is just past my seam. There's my seam. It's just past it because I've given myself about an inch of the webbing here and there. And so I'm going to pin around and I'm going to follow the basting line that I made. Now my basting line is not perfect. Keep that in mind. I will tell you right now, it is not absolutely perfect at a quarter of an inch, but it's really darn close. So shouldn't hurt anything to follow it. And I'm telling you, this is such a fun way to hide the seams at the top. I'm like, I definitely think I'm going to need to come up with some different sizes for this bag. So just, just make the height and width on the fabrics smaller and do this. And I do still have fabric left from this bag. So may or may not make another one. I'm thinking I'm going to the next thing I, I do want to make a wallet. I think I'm going to do that this afternoon. Um, make a small snap wallet that will go or not, not really small, but a, 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 the envelope fold over, whatever you want to call it. Um, because this doesn't really have room for money. You need to be able to take money with you also. And there's a nice big zipper pocket that you could store the wallet in if you wanted to. started to get scared that I cut this too short and then I remembered I had the same problem when I made the other one. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's not going to be long enough, but actually she's done a very good job of figuring out the dimensions on this pattern. So you should go trust that you're going to be just fine. And I do apologize if you start to hear the lawnmowers going. One of the reasons I don't do Friday videos is because in my neighborhood it is lawn mowing day. And so we get all the lawnmowers going. Okay, so now you can see how this is sticking out. We are going to end up flipping the webbing, webbing up so everything gets flipped upright. And then these get pushed off to the side. I mean, we're going to sew them together first. Um, they get pushed off to the side and we zigzag over them, zigzag over the edges to seal the edges in. And that's the part that looks a little messy. Um, but again, overall, 
the pattern is really cool and the process the process is really neat how it's going to hide away our seams we're going to get all of the um, strength we need with the double top stitching and everything else it, it really comes out looking nice so um, now we're going to go to the sewing machine I think because I've messed up twice with this bag I'm taking my time and reading the pattern all right change thread to match belting at side seam sew beginning and end of belt facing together vertically holding stitching snug against the edge of the tote trim the belting ends to three quarters of an inch away from the seam then sew around the top of the tote one quarter inch from the edge of the belting keep short raw ends of belting facing free from stitching Okay, so those, that's actually two steps there. Step 28 and 29. 29A, sorry, 29A. So we are gonna go to the sewing machine, maybe. If I can manipulate things, there we go. Wow, that camera is angled poorly. All my cameras are a little off today. I'm wondering what happened. I think the kitty cat got in here. Move things around. Okay. So now I am not going to get my table out and all that crap because we are just going to have to move it away anyway. I am going to put my zipper foot on. And you're like, why are you putting your zipper foot on? because the first thing we're going to do is sew these two tabs together as tightly as we can and therefore I want to be able to use the um, as much weight as I can so I need it to be over here so it's just like I have a zipper over on this side it's really thick I'm not going to sew there so I'm just going to move my needle over as close as I can to the edge of the foot. That's as far as we go. I am going to put my stitch fix, which means that it's going to knot at the beginning and I will knot it at the end. So going as tight as I can right along the bag, just like they told me. And then I'm going to knot at the end. All right. Now I'm going to put my quarter inch foot back on. And I'm going to put the stitch back in the center. And now we're going to stitch around. Do not include the tabs these extra tabs do not include them in the stitching and it doesn't matter where you start you're going to start you're going to stop I am doing the fix so I'm, I'm doing the, the stitching at the beginning and it's only because even though this stitch is going to get included into other stitches later on, I still like to have that security. And I did mess up. I should have started over on the other side, but because we're only going to sew to the tabs. bag was fighting with me and I went eh I'll start a little further in and just now it dawned on me that's not going to work I'm going to have to go back and stitch it anyway and remember on your seams you've got a lot of layers of fabric so take your time 
And when you get to the straps, the handles, again, you've got a lot of layers of fabric and belting and everything else going on. Coming up to my little tabs here. And I want to take my time and get as close as I can. tabs that way, go over here, which is where I should have started to begin with and failed, because I wasn't thinking. are. So step 29B, trim away outside tote fabric, tote lining, and batting close to the stitching, but do not trim the belting facing. Trim carefully to prevent cutting the lining. These raw fabric edges will be covered up in a later step. So here we go. Sometimes I need to figure out how to get this tablet on that side of my body, but I don't have anywhere to put it. There we go. So here we go. We have our belting stitched a quarter inch away, which you cannot see because I used white thread just like they told me to. But if you look inside, you can see here. So we want to trim all of this down to the quarter of an inch so that it will get hidden away in our when we flip our belting up because we're going to flip the belting up and if you look right now we've got all these this raw edges showing so we're going to trim it back under the belting so that all of the raw edges will be hidden away. And you're like, but then you're gonna trim off your tabs on your, you're right. But they're still nice and long and they're where they need to be so that we can, um, they're the right length to be hidden 
and we've got the ability, they've, they've just got some extra strength to them. So, all right, this can be challenging. Throw one in. Because you don't want to trim the belting. Okay. Back to here. So this is what we're doing. The belting is not getting cut. This extra fabric is what's getting cut. And being careful not to cut the stitch line. So be cautious of that. And don't cut the belting. All right, I'm at the seam, which of course has all sorts of extra layers of fabric. You don't want to use bad scissors for this. You want to make sure you've got nice, sharp scissors. Otherwise, you're never going to get anything cut. It's just going to sit there flipping. Another seam. All right, almost all the way around. made it all the way around and I'm verifying I didn't catch the seam at any point because I'm always afraid that's going to happen. I shouldn't say always. The last time I did it I was afraid it was going to happen too. Okay, now the next step, step 30. Fold belting facing E up towards handles and roll down unfinished seams of tote lining. So, turn in this up this way. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to top stitch on the exterior fabric, and that will go into the quarter inch batting seam that, or belting seam that we made when we did this. So, again, now we want to. Um, carefully or yeah carefully we're going to go around and if you want to use pins you can I am not I am going to use my top stitch foot and my fingers and we're going to get our top stitch around on this fabric so if you want your fabric your top stitch thread to contrast with your 
fabric, you're going to do that. If you want it to blend in, you're going to do that. And if you want to, you can use a different colored thread for your bobbin because that needs to match your belting or contrast your belting, depending on what you want. I've been using white on all of my exterior pieces. So even the top stitch along the pocket here is white. Um, so I am going to continue using the white thread. And that will just go along with everything I've done so far. Let's see, I've got a piece of thread hanging out here. I'm going to cut that. All right. Let's see. So yes. Top stitch on outside of bag, just under the lower edge of belting, facing through all layers, keeping short ends of belting facing at the seams free from... So our little tabs here, these little short edges, yeah, they're still going to be hanging out. They're supposed to be three quarters of an inch long. I did not measure that and cut those. I was supposed to do that and I didn't. I knew I forgot to do something. Actually, the shorter one is the right length, so we're going to just trim them both down to be the same length. There we go. Okay, so it says do not sew those in. That is, so I will not. Let's go to the sewing machine. There we go. Alrighty, we're going to switch over to the top stitch foot because we are top stitching. Ow. <coughs> and our top stitch stitch. There we go. And these are, this is where the tabs are, those two little tabs. I'm going to start up right there. Do not get the tabs in the top stitch. And so therefore I am going to do my fixing. I am going to secure it at the beginning and the end of my top stitch. All right, here we go. Handles have to stay out of the way. Keep everything taut so you get a nice top stitch. And in this case, I am pulling the fabric away from each other so that the seam is nice and taut and our top stitch is exactly, gets every layer in it. Now when we get here, we have lots of layers going on. We've got fabric, we've got two pieces of belting, and the, so everything is going to be a little bit slower at this point. Stretch it apart, keep it straight. Make sure your handles are out of the way. Coming up to my side seam, so cautious, slow, I 
Oh no! My handle has come out. What happened? Cut. I did not get all, I either cut the fabric or something. All right, so we need to reattach this handle to the bag. Let's get this through here. Is it wide enough? It's not wide enough. All right, seam ripper. The handle put back in. Here we go. So it does look like I cut too close at one point. All right, turn this over. And let's do back to regular. Make sure we have the whole handle loose over here. There we go. All right, let's fix this. So we've got this in, we've got the fabric. Let's trim this. Flip it back over. And there we go, handles back in. Okay, where was our top stitching at? That's where we stopped. Switch back to our top stitch foot. Switch back to our top stitch stitch. Okay, let's try this again. So what I did was a quick fix, and you now we are going to have this handle is going to be slightly shorter than the other handle, and I'm talking maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe half an inch. I did pull it a little bit out. At this point in the game, there was no other option. I shouldn't say that. The other option would have been to completely take off all of the belting and to redo the handles. The catch to that would be you've already trimmed up your fabric. So all of the, the entire top portion of the bag would now be about a quarter of an inch short. What I did was just make the handle about a quarter of an inch short. So instead of the entire bag being smaller, the handle has a bit uh, is a bit smaller. Um, the other option would be to throw the whole thing away and start over again, which I think is a complete waste of fabric. And Everybody makes mistakes. This is my third one this, in this, just in this bag. Um, the first two involved re-sewing as far as taking things apart and putting them back together correctly. This one, as I said, just took the 
step of making the strap or handle, I guess, a little bit shorter in order to save the entire bag. more stitches. There we go. All right, so let me show you. This strap is attached to this bag. Inside, yeah, you can kind of see it. I'm going to have to trim it. I'm going to have to trim it a little bit because that strap is still hanging out a little bit further than it needs to. But I'm going to have to trim off the little threads anyway, so I'm okay with that. Okay, second top stitch. As we've done on this entire bag, she did it, designed it so that it has two layers of top stitch. So I switch to my quarter inch piecing foot because we're going to do a quarter inch away from the last top stitch. I extended my stitch length to 3.5 on my standard stitches. And we'll get the bag underneath. And again, not at the beginning and the end. And do our second row of stitching. And this will give additional security to the um, webbing. Barely. And now the last official step of this bag, because the zipper is considered optional, is to do a wide zigzag that is close together. So I'm putting on my applique foot so I can see exactly what's going on. I'm going to trim off some of these threads that are driving me crazy. There we go. And now we're going to squeeze our bag underneath the presser foot. And we need our belting to be straight. I forgot to push, pick my stitch before I got this all lined up. Did <laughs> All right. I need a zigzag stitch. And I want it to be wide. And I want it to be close together. Not that close. There we go. I am going to fix the stitch, and you can't see diddly boo of what I'm doing, but let's see.
So I'm trying to follow the cut mark of the belting with my center line on my applique foot. And now it's all, it's attached with a zigzag stitch. Now I'm going to duplicate what I just did on this side. Hey babe, you're gonna block all their people's view of the can of the bag, sweetie. Yes, I know you love these bags. She loves these bags because they're big and she can lay on them. She likes it whenever some I make something that she can lay on. Sorry, baby. Let me get the papers out of your way. This is my next project, a wallet. I'm gonna see about making a wallet that matches this. Oh, I think I mentioned that already. All right. So let me show you up close. That didn't work. There we go. This is the edge with the zigzag on it. And remember I told you this is going to face forward because in my opinion, people don't look at the front of your bag or the, the front edge of your bag. So there is a zigzag stitch. It goes all the way down. I did get into the fabric. I did that on purpose. I wanted to make sure it went, was attached all the way down. And here are the edges. But since it's white thread, it matches and it also finishes off the top stitching. And then on the inside of the bag, covers up the raw edges all the way around. All right. Oh, hey, babe. So right now, this bag is technically finished from the standpoint of um, there are no optional pieces put onto it. It is done. Now, the optional zipper can go on next. This also involves determining right side and wrong side of the bag. You typically do not want your zipper back there. You want your zipper up with you. So if you're carrying your bag on this arm, you want the zipper on this side. I carry it this way, so I want the zipper on this side. So let's see, it tells me to lay zipper face down against edge of cotton belting on the inside of the bag. Align zipper edge with bottom edge of belting. Now this pattern was designed, I should have mentioned this, with a separating zipper. 
And I used zipper tape in my last bag, so that'll be, it, it worked out fine for me. Um, but it was a little more challenging. I have a very needy kitty cat. Um, was a little more challenging at the bottom side of it because when you do the second side, you have to fold it out. And it, it does get a little more challenging. But place the zipper inside and we're gonna stitch the zipper in place on the belting. And we need a little bit of an edge on either side. Oh, excuse me, which is fine because we have plenty of extra. So let's go to the machine and get it pinned up and sewn up. We're gonna switch out of our that foot. Are you okay? What happened, Callie? Are you okay, baby? You made noise. Are you okay? All right. All right, so let's see. It says to do that. Yes, it does. I feel like I didn't do it that way. this side to that side. And keep in mind, this is getting sewn to the belting, not to the fabric. The fabric already has its top stitch in it, so we don't need to worry about that. This is going to the belting. All right, we have a problem. This bag is going to be going in the garbage. Oh, I didn't even switch you over to the sewing machine, so it's probably just as well. Here we go. Um, this was a complete waste, and I'm not going to waste my zipper when the bag itself is not going to work. Um, not certain if I can fix it. I don't think at this point I can. Callie! What are you doing? Get out of the bag. I'm talking to the nice people on the camera. Sweetie, you can't get in the bag. Not a carry a kitty bag. No, this is not a carry a kitty bag. She thinks it is though. Okay, you wanna go in there? That's fine. There we go. I just need to show these nice folks what happened. All right. You stay in there. We've only got a few minutes left. So this is the side of the handle that I fixed, that I attached tighter in. Well, it turns out the other side was also loose. And at this point, there's nothing I can do that can save that handle. Um, at least not that I could do that I could feel comfortable selling or 
you know, letting someone else get a hold of the bag. Um, you can see now that it does fit a small dog. Because <laughs> um, we have a key cat who's quite comfy in here. Um, so I'm not going to waste putting my zipper on. Um, and that's an optional step in the bag. Anyway, the bag is great. The pattern is phenomenal, especially considering it's free. Um, what I will probably do is I will continue this for personal use and we'll just somehow stitch that on there. I have no idea what I'll do because I can't tear it apart. I have no idea how I'll get those that attached. But at this point, it gets to be a personal bag, not a for sale bag. I was going to tell you that it was going to be for sale at the end of this, but no such luck. But it is a phenomenal pattern. Um, just have to be more cautious than I was, apparently, when I was cutting around because I cut too close and the belting frayed. Um, and I'm not certain if there's any way to reinforce belting. Uh, probably have to do a YouTube lookup on that. Uh, but so, yes, at this point, the bag is done. We have exterior pockets. We have these lovely, the amazing, huge inside zipper pocket. Huge, but huge inside zipper pocket. Excellence for all sorts of stuff. Carry your suntan lotion. Um, the big area back, big areas back here, so you can carry a couple of towels, or if you're using it for clothing, you can put some pairs of shoes back in here. Um, really, really phenomenal bag. I like to to thank. I always pick the thimble. She made an excellent pattern and an excellent bag. So. All right, we will see you all next time. Uh, next time I'm going to be make, making some wine totes, but we're going to be using belting again, so I'm going to have to be careful. Um, make sure I don't make a mess of the belting again. But we will be making a two-bottle wine tote uh, with a snap and some belting handles, a little leather thrown in just to, you know, keep us fun and interesting. And we'll see you all next time. I am Carol Crafty Grandma. Don't forget like, thumbs up, follow, remind, whatever it is you need to do to make sure you see me the next time.